Have you guys ever queued up in Apex and wondered, why are my random teammates so bad? Or how am I possibly in the same lobby as a three stack of Apex Predators? Or maybe you've ventured off into Apex Arenas, and you're a decent player, but then all of a sudden you see your two random teammates being level 3 and 7, and the team you're going against all has 4k damage and 20 bomb badges. How does Apex matchmaking truly work, and what's their goal with it? In this video I'm going to lay out everything I know about Apex Legends matchmaking. And I think some of this stuff is really going to surprise you guys, so be sure to listen closely. I'm going to provide you with a thesis and a briefcase full of evidence to back it up. On top of the fact that I have close to 5,000 hours played in Apex, so I do know a thing or two about this topic. At the end of the video, I'll give you my conclusion on what to do with this information and how you can use the matchmaking to your advantage. Alright, let's jump right into this Apex Legends Masterclass. The first thing you want to understand about Apex matchmaking is it prides itself on fast queue times. They would rather focus on quantity rather than quality, and that is because they as developers have assumed that we would rather get into a game than have it be the perfect match. Now obviously this is a heated topic because each player is going to feel one way or another about this, but that hasn't really changed their thought process, at least as far as we know. About one year ago, former Apex dev Jason McCord, who I should mention wasn't just any dev, he was one of the lead game devs for Apex until he recently resigned, he gave us some context about how Apex matchmaking works. Here's what he said. As a game that requires 60 people to play, we prioritize making matches quickly over creating the perfect match. This is most noticeable in small regions or late night sessions, and this is why I really don't identify our system as SBMM, aka skill based matchmaking. This is why you'll see some variance in who is in your match. We assume you'd rather play a match than sit in a queue for 10 minutes. This goes for ranked 2. We wait longer to make more fair matches here, but eventually we want all of our players to actually play, so we will merge ranks to start a game. To be fair, I don't think the system is flawless and we are discussing improvements. I don't believe it's any secret that I won't share with you exactly how our matchmaking system works. For a few reasons, it's probably exploitable if you tried hard enough, and even if it's not exploitable in any way, it doesn't mean players wouldn't try weird stuff to try to exploit it. It also changes often. We can make tweaks on the back end relatively quickly and we don't broadcast those tweaks. Sometimes we are running a test to see if a particular tweak to the math makes players play longer or lowers queue times, etc. We don't broadcast changes so that our test can be unattained. Typical experiment guidelines, caustic approved. We also believe that the game is best when you are trying to play for real, even in pubs. We've seen real data that shows people who lose or win too much have a much higher chance to stop playing forever. This game feels best when the pacing of wins comes more earned against players of similar skill. A common comment I see is players don't want to sweat in pubs, but they also don't want to get steamrolled in pubs, and you can't have both. If you have very tight skill based matchmaking, you'll have sweaty matches because it's like a mirror match fight yourself boss fight. If you have no skill based matchmaking, you might get some free kills, but someone is going to be much better than you in that lobby and you will get steamrolled swiftly. And this is the key guys. So yeah, complicated question gets complicated answer. I hope it at least answers why you might get the less than perfect match every time and that we are always working on trying to improve match quality and queue times. Now to be real with you guys, I kind of like this answer and I agree with the sentiment. No one wants the games to be too easy because if it is, well they aren't going to keep playing it. There's a delicate balance in gaming where you don't want it to be too easy, but if it's too hard, it becomes extremely frustrating. Even if some of their methods have changed since this comment, like tweaking some things here and there, through my experience in this game, I don't believe any part of the matchmaking has changed too significantly regarding his answer, except the rank changes they publicly announced back in season eight. There's one fundamental aspect about Apex matchmaking that wasn't mentioned here and it deserves your attention. When it comes to public matches in Apex, I really break it down into two brackets, the minor league and the major leagues. The minor leagues are most commonly referred to as bot lobbies, and this term has a lot of misconceptions, so let me be very clear about what these lobbies entail. These bot lobbies are reserved for brand new players, players who are still figuring out all of the basic things most of us know by now. So oftentimes it's filled with players who are level 60 and below, give or take, but level isn't the only factor here. They are considering other things like KD, how often you win or lose, and your accuracy, and probably some other deterring factors. 
Now, of course, if I go out and create a brand new account, load up my first game and proceed to drop a 20 kill game in that bot lobby, I will not be returning to those lobbies. Apex MMR has detected I'm clearly better than my opposition. And so I will be shipped up to the major leagues. Now, once you're in the major leagues, well, this is where things get a little bit more gray. Players that have grown out of the minor leagues are going to vary so widely in terms of skill set that in turn, it makes the matchmaking even more flawed. Because remember what I told you at the beginning about how Apex is more focused on getting you in a game and not necessarily perfecting the balance of that lobby? Well, yeah, this is why your teammates and enemy skill levels are going to vary so widely from match to match. And I do have another piece of compelling evidence to reveal to you. But before I do that, if you guys are enjoying this video, please go ahead and just smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This helps my video out tremendously. It's free and will only take a second of your time. As a thank you, I'm throwing in another clip of me skateboarding at the end of the video. So check that out if you're interested. I wanna show you another explanation from a current dev at Respawn who elaborated a little further on this topic, which should give you some more clarity. Now this tweet was fairly recent and this dev was responding to criticism around the imbalanced matchmaking in arenas. And he explained some things that most people just don't seem to understand. He says, MMR equals rank. You can be the same MMR, but different rank. But if you solo queue and at a high level, it's extremely difficult to find you other people to play with as all preds three stack. This is the same issue in BR, but because there is no D rank system, it's artificially better. MMR distribution is all right because there's lots of average players and preds are rare. Now, let me add some clarifying details about what he said. When he uses the word pred, I think it's important to note that anyone diamond and above is already considered a minority portion of this community. We haven't gotten any hard numbers on rank percentages lately, but as of April 22nd, when season 8 ended and season 9 began, if you combine players who reached diamond, masters, and or predator rank in season 8, it was around 6.2%. Now we're about 8 months past this latest data that I just showed, but let's just be a little bit liberal here and add 1.8% to this total, which would equal 8%. As you can see, that's still a huge minority stake of the player base. So why does this matter? Well, think about it. Inherently, it's going to be extremely difficult to match you with teammates of a similar skill level if there's less than 10% of that player base equating to these higher levels. But what does that mean for the team or teams you're going to have to go against? Well, I've got some bad news. Before I tell you about that bad news, let me list a few variables that play a huge role in all of this. Number one, what server or region do you play on? Some are more populated and active than others. Number two, what time of day are you queuing up? Similar to traffic, depending on the hour could result in more competitive matches or a total mixed bag of players. And number three, solo queuing. It is popular, but a lot of the better players tend to queue with one another. So here's the bad news. It's my understanding that Apex doesn't really care if they're matchmaking three players queued up together versus a bunch of solo players. When I say solo queue players, I don't mean no fill. I mean, you're just readying up and you're getting two randoms or a random in your match. Because if the queue only has X amount of players readied and that's what's available, they're queuing that match up and sending it through, often resulting in you with two less adequate teammates going against a pre-made three-man squad that is probably diamond or above and they're all on voice communication with one another. Remember how we mentioned MMR distribution is all right because there's a lot of average players but preds are rare? Well, here's the worst part. Average is a relative term here. Average could vary so widely given any of the variables I just mentioned that you could end up with a total crapshoot of teammates, which generally in my experience makes the solo queue experience consistently inconsistent and extremely frustrating to deal with. So what should you do with all of this information? Well, the way I see it, you've really got two options. Number one, find some people to play with. I talk about this in a lot of my videos because I truly think it makes the matchmaking a little bit better for you and in turn, hopefully more enjoyable. That is, of course, assuming you enjoy the company of the people you're playing with. A caveat to this is make sure to be aware that if you are, let's say, a gold level player queuing up with your buddy in a public match, but your buddy is more like a diamond level player, well, welcome to their lobbies. The matchmaking isn't going to cater to your skill level in this situation because they don't want better players queuing up with respectfully worse players to exploit any gaps in the matchmaking. The second option you have is acceptance. 
You've just got to accept the fact that the matchmaking isn't designed to do you too many favors. No one said it was flawless, and despite my frustrations at it, I do understand balancing Apex matchmaking in public matches has probably hundreds of variables going at any given moment, and that it's never going to feel great 100% of the time. The one thing I do wish is that they created longer queue times for the sweatier players who do want to three stack public matches. But players have been asking for this for quite a long time and we have got no response. If you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing as most of my content centers around helping you guys improve at Apex Legends. That's going to be it for me on this one. Here's a clip of me skating. Peace. That was gas.